This week on Hops and Gnarly Brewing, I'm making a fruited sour beer. But instead of using that kind of fruit, I'm using this kind of fruit. And instead of using conventional souring methods, I'm using Philly Sour from Lalamond. Now, let's make some beer. We're going to want a dry water profile to give us a nice refreshing finish and I'm starting with some local spring water and building the water profile using gypsum, calcium chloride, and epsom salt. This is important. Whatever you do, don't use tap water or you'll mess with the fruit flavors. For the grain bill, I'm using some locally malted grain from Proximity Malt and I'm starting with a base of 83% Pilsen. Then, to add some body and push us closer to the smoothie sour realm, I'm adding 13% malted oats. So, we want a dry finish but a pretty thick body and a whole bunch of fruit. This could be good. Let's mash in at 135 Fahrenheit or 57 Celsius and we'll take it from there. mashed in and the grain is well saturated it's time to raise the temperature up to 149 Fahrenheit or 65 Celsius for the remainder of the mash. I'm hoping this extra step will create a more fermentable wort because Philly sour yeast needs simple sugars to properly sour the beer. While the mash finishes up, I need to get this fermenter set up for temperature control. Anvil offers a really nice out of the box solution for these fermenters, but I've been using these weldless tri clamp bulkheads on mine so I can attach things like a hop dropper. And with that thing in the way, I can't use the standard solution from Anvil. So here's my idea. I'm gonna mount the SS Brewtech cooling coil directly to the lid of my Anvil bucket fermenter. Then. I'll install this thermo well and I'll be able to hook this thing up just like my conicals. To drill the holes, I'm marking the location with a center punch then drilling a pilot hole with a fairly small bit. Using a lubricant while you do this can keep it from getting too hot and might keep your tools from breaking. I'm just using dish soap. With the pilot hole drilled, I'm switching to a step bit and slowly working up to a size that works with the cooling coil. I had to test the fit a few times but Eventually, the coil slipped right into place, and the whole assembly fits into the fermenter. Now for the thermo well. Besides drilling into the fermenter instead of the lid, I used the exact same process as before. I marked the location with a center punch, drilled a pilot hole, and then widened that hole with a step bit until the thermo well could fit. Now I'll get this thing put back together and we can get back to brewing. We've been hanging out at mash out temperature for 10 minutes now. 
time to yank these grains and get our boil started. Okay, we're up to full boil and it's time for the one and only hop addition. Here's five grams or seven and a half IBUs of Galaxy and our short 30 minute boil starts now. With 15 minutes left in the boil, I'll sanitize the plate chiller using the boiling wort. This is also a great time to add yeast nutrient, whirl flock, or any other things like that. And just like that, it's time to chill this beer down and get ready for fermentation. Cool. Now I'll get some oxygen hooked up, start the transfer to the fermenter, and I usually oxygenate for 90 seconds with the regulator set to one. Finally, I'll add this magical yeast and we'll ferment at 68 Fahrenheit or 20 Celsius. It's been two days since brew day and the pH has already dropped to 3.4. I have some cold water in the bottom of the kegerator and it's recirculating through the cooling coil we installed on brew day whenever the temperature rises above 68 Fahrenheit or 20 Celsius. Now it's time to add some fruit to the party, but before I do, I'm adding a pouch of Kvyking from Imperial because I've had some good results with Kvike and fruit beers. Now I can add the fruit. Here's 4.4 pounds of mango puree and 4.4 pounds of pineapple, both from Fierce Fruit, giving us a grand total of almost nine pounds of fruit in this three gallon batch. Now I'll crank the temperature up into the 80s and we'll wait for final gravity. It's been a couple weeks since brew day and I'm rolling this thick boy fruit beer around to help distribute the fruit. like we've got a rich golden yellow beer and the head is leaning away from white towards something a little more creamy. The aroma is dominated by mango, pineapple, and overall fruitiness, but I smell a little yeast. Going in for a taste, it's a medium to heavy body, strong fruit flavor, and a bright crisp finish, but I'm getting a little too much yeast here for this style. Looking back on the recipe, I think I meant to use Loki, but accidentally used Kviking. But I probably didn't need to use either because Philly Sour would be just fine on its own. Overall, this is a good beer and it's gonna disappear fast, just like my previous batches with Philly Sour. I've used it with other yeasts, tons of hops, and even made a holiday beer with it, and it just seems like it can handle anything. Let me know in the comments what you're making with Philly Sour Yeast and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. 
Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll see you again soon.